Hello, today I'm gonna show you how to speed up your cycle surrenders by 23% by overclocking your GPU. Let's first create a benchmark for ourselves or just get one. I'm just gonna make one by adding a cube and pressing F3 and search for quick fur. Now add a sky texture to make it look presentable for you guys and render the first baseline for the speed of your GPU or GPUs. And remember the time or just write it down, you boomer. Now get MSA Afterburner, download, yeah. install and start it. First, ignore core voltage. It won't affect anything if you have a GPU that's newer than Maxwell uh, from NVIDIA. Yeah, you go ask Mr. Leather Hello Jacket there. why. Next up is power limit and temp limit, which are linked together and you can just eat them uh, to the max. It just gives you more power for your GPU so you can clock a bit higher. And increasing the thermal limit will just stop it from dialing back a little too early when it's getting a little warmer. Now to the juicy parts, uh, the core clock and memory clock. Let's start with the core clock, which won't give you all that much performance, but increase it step by step and run a picture of your furry cube till Blender starts complaining. When it does, you'll have to restart Blender and dial back the core clock like three steps or so, so it won't just randomly happen again. And now the same with the memory clock. In my case, I'm super lucky and I can just yield it all the way to 1500 megahertz. Yeah, I'm super lucky, I guess. Now run again and be happy that it's faster. And I did some extra overclocking to find out what Blender loves. And let me tell you, Blender loves memory speed and almost doesn't care about core clock. And I found out that optics can leverage the speed increase a little more than CUDA for some reason. I thought that it wouldn't really get all that much faster because optics use an RT cores, but I guess it's still affected by overclocking in some weird way. Now let's go further into numbers with a high and well mid and graphics card i guess the gtx 2080 and a low end one the 1050 ti on the 2080 you almost don't see an increase in speed while overclocking the core clock only but the memory clock does an astonishing job 20.05 percent what that's a lot but my guess is that the gpu just renders a bit faster than the memory can save all those rays which you can see when looking in the combined overclock with core and memory clock it didn't just add 0.92 percent performance to the memory only test it was 1.98 percent more than that now obviously you might not want to run overclock to scrape the limit of your gpu but lowering the clock will still yield you a 18.94 percent uplift just imagine the gpu getting harder in summer because well it's summer and you start the renderer and went out the house to i don't know maybe do some photogrammetry link in the description and in the top right if it's out by the time you're watching talk about heat if you have multiple gpus in your system they first might not be able to clock as high as other ones and second might get hotter like hotter and might get more unstable either immediately or a couple months down the road and don't forget pushing any electronic will reduce its lifespan you probably don't have to worry about it because you're definitely gonna upgrade your gear before anything bad can happen on the right you can see our fabric cube render times if you go and look at the results of the 1050 ti it'll look a bit less exciting though 11 7.48% is still a respectable uplift. But again, it shows a fairly big improvement in memory clock. Though this time the clock clock does a lot more. And again, uh, those times. So, what's the verdict? If you want to create a render server and buy 6 2080s, uh, you'll have the performance of 7 ish. And maybe save money. If you have the cooling and power supplies for it. If you want to know more about overclocking and how to do it safely, I will link a couple videos down in the description for you to check out and they're gonna go way more in depth than I did. Sisu. By the way, the GPU you saw throughout the video was an ATI Radeon HD4870, the one gigabyte version, just so you don't have to google it if you wanted it. And no, I didn't use it for any tests. Although will it still work for Blender? Uh, might be a new video idea. Let me look it up. Well. Blender needs OpenGL 3.3 to run, which it got, but I just know drivers for Windows 10, but for Linux. And let's let the Google Translate talk to you about the outro. If you liked it, leave a like, and if you didn't, leave a dislike and comment down below why you didn't or did like it. And if you loved it, sub to my channel and ring the bell to never miss a video of mine. Smiley face, click the left video to watch whatever YouTube thinks you'll like and the right one will show you how to make a blood splatter simulation in Blender because Halloween. Bye. If you want to know more about clocking...